Hi, I'm Liz Nedden. Let's have a look at question 3b part 2 and this is the 2017 level 2 probability exam. So here is our question. We are asked to compare the distribution and the histogram from the samples. Remember this is our theory versus our sample. Okay, those are the two graphs that we've been given and we want to be comparing them. In particular they've said shape, center and spread and give numerical evidence. Okay, so those are the three things that we want to look at. So let's start by having a look at our shape. Okay, so if I look at the theory one here, then that has a lovely normal distribution. Beautiful bell shaped curve. That means it is symmetric and our mean, our median and our mode is all the same. Okay, if I now compare the sample, so the shape of this one, if I draw my shape over top, there's two ways that I can look at this. The marking guide has just gone for classifying this as a bimodal distribution. Personally I would tend to say this is more of a less skewed um, but obviously that's me having a slight difference of opinion. That's okay. So we'll go with bimodal. So in that case, the bimodal, we need to say, well, where are the peaks? So we've got one peak he here and one peak here. And I haven't drawn them in the middle where they should be. Um, so if I go halfway between 3,950 and 4,000, because that's the category, um, that's the range of values in there, halfway between, that would give me one mode at about 3,975 and the other one I would have a mode halfway between 4,050 and 4,100 so that would be 4,075 grams. Okay so there would be our two modes. Obviously it is not symmetric um, and the mean would be different from both the median and from the mode, okay, because it's not a symmetric distribution. So that's the first thing that I would want to put. So in terms of marking, if you were able to categorize and say this was a symmetric distribution for versus a non-symmetric distribution, that would get you one point. If you were able to talk about how the mean median mode are the same versus them being different, that would be a second point. If you were able to talk about um, that unimodal, so a normal distribution, versus the bimodal with our different two modes, that would get you a third tick. If you get two of these comments, or in the following section with our center and spread, if you get two comments there, then that would give you an achieved. So that's looking at the shape. Now let's have a look at our center and think right what is the center doing for this. So think about which is the best measure of center when we've got these distributions. I know that my sample data here is bimodal so that I know that in terms of looking at the mean that is not a good measure to look, use. Okay so in that case my median is a much better measure to use. It's more stable when we have a non-symmetric distribution. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to notice. I'm going to compare the medians. That's the best measure to use for these examples. So I could talk about in my first one, my mean or median, it's going to be the same because it's a symmetric distribution. That's going to give me a median of 4050 grams. Whereas if I'm talking about my weight, so remember median halfway, so there's 50 values, um, half of 50 is 25, so if I say right there's one, there's another four, so that gives me five so far, then there's 10, so there's 15, then the next one is seven, 15 plus seven is 22, so my median is going to be somewhere in this category here. Okay, so that's where my median will be. 
Um, so I can say my median is somewhere between 4050 and 4100. All right. So now I want to compare those because remember we're comparing the theory versus the sample and we can say this median of the um, theoretical one is smaller or that this median here is bigger. Okay, so making that comparison and I've got numbers to go with it, then that would be another valid statement. So there's our shape and centre and now let's have a look at the spread. So in terms of measuring spread, we can talk about the range, we can talk about the interquartile range, or we can talk about the standard deviation. So three different ways to measure spread. So if I was to look at the range, I can say, well, for the theoretical one, the range is approximately 3,800 to 4,100. Okay. Um, if I look at the range in figure two, it goes from approximately 3,850 up to 4,200. So let's actually calculate that. So that would give me a range for the theory of 4,300 minus 3,800, which is 500 grams, or the range for the sample, 4,200 minus 3,850 is 350 grams. Okay, so there's one way we can do it. You could do the interquartile range. It's a much harder thing to estimate with these particular graphs that we've been given. Um, but I'll leave you to try that if you wish. Standard deviation. Now this is an important one to talk about. Um, when I have a lovely normal distribution, a perfect theoretical normal distribution, I know that 99% of my data, so if I shade in the area underneath that curve, 99% of that data is contained within three standard deviations. So that means if I take the mean and go back by three standard deviations and up by three standard deviations, 99% of the data is covered inside that range. So that gives me a total range of six standard deviations, three below, three above. I know my range is 500, so I can say, well, six standard deviations is equal to 500. So that means one standard deviation is 500 divided by six, which is going to be 83.3 occurring, 83 and a third grams. Let's do the same thing for figure two. So we know we've got our range there. And again, I'm expecting 99% of my data should be within plus or minus three standard deviations. So that's a total range of six standard deviations. So six standard deviations would be equal to 350. So one standard deviation is 350 divided by six, which gives us a value of 58.3 recurring. So that means we can either compare the range for both of them, or you can compare the standard deviation, or you could go into the interquartile range. So to do that, think about which one's bigger, which one's smaller, which one's more spread out, which one's more variable, which is less spread out, which is less variable. So in this case, I would say that the sample data has a smaller spread in both cases, and there is less variation in the sample than in the theoretical distribution. So that would be another comment. So in terms of marking, two comparative comments gets you through to the achieved, three comments, and that must have numerical justification, that gets you through to R, and four comments, including numerical justification, gets you through to your excellence. That takes us to the end of question three, so then you can go through and mark that. One U gets you N2, two U's, A3, three U's, A4. If you have one R, M5, two R's, M6, one T, E7, or two T's is E8. 
then you're going to put all three question marks together. So for example, say I got a mark in question one of A4, question two I got a mark of M5, and question three I got a mark of N2. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take each of those the numbers, 4 plus 5 plus 2, that's going to give me a value of 9. Then I look at my cut score and say, right, the value of 9 is in this range here, A to 13. So overall for the exam, I would be getting an achieved if that's all my scores. Thank you very much for watching. Um, feel free to visit my website, which has got more videos and resources. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking the link below. And you can also connect to watch other videos in this playlist going through these exam answers.